it's early June in northern Michigan, and that means trouble. Big smallies on bed, big time. But today is the first day we went deep side fishing for trophy smallies with our good old friend Marcel, and we have a secret weapon for those deep big smallies. Stay tuned. Northern Michigan lakes, which usually has gin clear water, those big smallies like to spawn usually um, relatively deep, um, such as like 10 feet or even deeper. So the orange stuff on the deck was the super weapon I mentioned, uh, which is a flogger, a poor boy's flogger. Um, you know, in a good way, it's called flogger. Bring, bring it here, bring it here. That's not that big. That's not that bigger. It's a good actor. <laughs> he ate it in a hurry. What, what, what did he eat? Uh, the cross shed, yes. Man! They, they really like that cross tail shed. Yep. That was a quick fish. The flogger fishing usually takes a team to really work on it. So we have to locate the bed first, of course. And then here, our guy, Marcel, will actually control the boat and also look through the flogger at the bed and um, you know tell uh, the angler where to throw the bait and also uh, coach the angler how to uh, present the bait um, because he's looking at the deep bed and through the frogger and he knows how the fish is reacting toward the bait. Got it. That took a while. <laughs> Watch your foot. Oh, there. Nice. Oh. Nice, 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 nice. Oh. Damn, you did it again! I can't believe it! <laughs> this fish took a long time. It's the better one. Great, man. Let's see what it looks like. So a lot of times, um, we can see the bed, but we cannot tell what size of fish is really locked on the bed. With the help of a flogger, we can actually see through yeah. the water and then you know decide if we want to spend the time working on that fish or if that was a small dink and we can just uh, you know pass it back. It's a nice fish, we got a nice fish on here, so let's see if, what we can do. Let's get that big. It feels good to catch them on the first drop, but this is not usually the case. At least not every time. It's a nice fish. Here, we found what appeared to be a massive fish locked on bed. Young started working on it, drop shotting a 3 inch white tube. However, those big fish are not easily committed to strike. This is probably Young's fifth attempt already, if I could count.
Well, after about like you know ten or twelve minutes, the fish is basically ignoring Young's white tubing offer. So at this point, usually the strategy is actually to either change the rig or change the bait. Here, Yang decides to change the bait, so he switched to drop shot walkie rig in a three inch Senko, just as he liked to use back in California. And apparently, this northern Michigan stubborn big fish is not buying those California tricks. So, Yang changed to a very flamboyant, uh, bloody pinky goby on a drop shot rig. And surprisingly, it's not even bloody merry time for the big fish. So we have to play some old tricks on him. And the tube jig, you know, instead of being a drop shot rig, which um, it gives the fish a little bit you know, off the bottom presentation, in many cases will work very effectively because it basically mimics a goby crawling through the bed. Yeah? That's good. What else would I try? Same view. It really pays off to have a million different types of bait on deck when doing these deep sight fishing or bedding giant smallmouth. Um, here, Yang is throwing a big go goby type of bait on a jig head. Terry, do you have a white tube? Big white tube. Yeah. yeah. Can, I, can I borrow it? <laughs> you want to try the, uh, the violet jet? It's a different color, man. Sure. It's drop shot. You get the tube right for it. You need a drop shot with a short leader. With a shorter leader? Yeah. Sure. Folks at home, did you see how much it takes to catch one giant bedding bass, huh? You want to try it? Try it. So change the back to the drop shot rig again uh, using a super pink tail. Right there. Fish. Is it in there? Yeah. What do you got on there? Buy the shack. Two, three. 
So almost immediately after Young released his uh, Five Plus, we found another massive fish locked on bed. Um, so this time it's my turn. Nesting out of nowhere? Yeah, nothing wrong. It's like I screwed up here. Um, for some reasons, the fish just came uh, unbuttoned, but luckily it yep. went straight back to its nest. Yeah. So, Try it again. give me a second chance. Go ahead. <laughs> just, re just remember my record of nine times. Okay. So that was Yang in the background. Yeah. So he basically set up the record of hooking up a bedding smolly for nine times and not catching it. Uh, but eventually he was, you know, able to catch it on the tenth drop, I believe, if I could count. Um, you know, just hopefully I didn't set that record. For those um, deep water bedding smally fishing, uh, wind is definitely not helping, um, especially in terms of um, perturbing the surface and not letting us um, to see the bed clearly. It's coming out of the west, it seems like it's coming out very flat, like it's going to North Pole. It's 70 degrees. I don't want to get out of sun. This fish is turning finicky in a hurry, especially after it was hooked just a few minutes ago. Um, it's not reacting to all these common side fishing bait, especially not to those white tubes on which it was hooked like two minutes ago. Alright, folks at home, do you see how difficult it is? You need to drop the bait to a specific spot on the bed. Yang was absolutely right. So there are usually one or two sweet spots on the nest. And you have to throw your bait exactly onto those sweet spots to trigger the fish to bite. Otherwise, it's just ignore the bait. But this is extremely difficult under those windy conditions. Bed is about the size of a small coffee table. For these deep ones, uh, they're usually located at about uh, 10 to 12 feet water. And there is a water refraction you have to also calculate um, when you throw your bait toward the bed and now plus the wind so it's just making all these st stubs um, difficult so here I'm switching the bait still using the short leader drop shot rig but 
switching to the robot one. And here comes the famous quote from Captain Marcel that is, there's only one color for those robot ones. And guess what that color is? So landed it on second hook set. Uh, not too bad as compared to Young's nine or ten times record. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Please stay tuned for our day two adventure up north. Thank you.